by the time a man reaches 50 years of age, he has a 75% chance of having an enlarged prostate and a 33% chance of having prostate cancer. As he continues to age, these numbers continue to worsen. It's an accepted medical fact that if a man lives long enough, some kind of prostate problem is virtually guaranteed. Prostate problems are not, however, inevitable. There are six main causes of prostate problems. These are hormonal imbalances, cancer, zinc deficiency, cadmium toxicity, calcification, and infection. In this audio presentation, we will discuss each of these six problems in detail, and then for each problem, tell you which natural ingredients are most effective at addressing each particular problem. Should you want a product with all of the ingredients for each of the problems we are about to discuss, they are available in the Endosterol product. Now, let's begin with hormonal imbalances and cancer, as these two problems are intimately related. Up until his early 30s, a man produces more testosterone than estrogen. Yes, you heard right. Men produce estrogen. This is natural and is nothing to worry about. Men produce estrogen and women produce testosterone. The difference is that men make more testosterone than estrogen and women make more estrogen than testosterone. It is this predominance of one hormone over the other that is responsible not just for the differences between male and female bodies, but also the differences between male and female personalities. Unfortunately, as a man ages, he makes less and less testosterone and more and more estrogen until by age 34, a man makes more estrogen than testosterone. I call this a hormonal inversion. This process accelerates with age, so that by the time a man is 60, he makes twice as much estrogen as testosterone, and by age 90, 12 times as much. While somewhere in a man's 50s, this change is officially labeled as andropause, which is the male version of menopause, you can see that the process actually starts in a man's mid-30s. A hormonal inversion can show up in many ways. In the sports world, a man's performance begins to suffer. This is why you don't see many professional athletes at the top of their game past age 40. Muscle size and tone decreases, and fat begins to accumulate. This gives a man a softer, more feminine appearance. In the business world, a man may begin to lose his competitive edge. In relationships, he becomes more passive. In general, as the hormonal inversion begins to take hold, a man becomes more sensitive and less aggressive, more feminine. Regardless of how you feel about the effect of female hormones on your personality, the male body doesn't like it at all. In particular, this hormonal inversion wreaks havoc on a man's prostate. Hormonal inversion, or the dominance of estrogen over testosterone in man, is due to three actions. First, as a man ages, he makes less testosterone. This is understandable, as all hormones decrease in their production with age. Second, some of his testosterone begins turning into dihydrotestosterone, or DHT for short. This happens courtesy of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, whose job it is to convert good testosterone into its evil counterpart, DHT. It's DHT that is the main cause of hair loss and prostate enlargement. Did you ever wonder why baldness is predominantly a male problem? It's because men make more testosterone than women and thus are at greater risk of having more testosterone that turns into DHT. The third cause of hormonal inversion is a bit more bizarre. It turns out that there is an enzyme in a man's body called aromatase, whose function it is to convert testosterone into estrogen, and not just any kind of estrogen, 
because there are actually three different types of estrogen. This aromatase enzyme turns testosterone into the most powerful of the three forms of estrogen, namely estradiol. Thus, as a man ages, he not only makes less testosterone, but what little testosterone he makes, his body then turns into DHT and the estrogen estradiol. Now, we already know that DHT causes hair loss and balding. What does estradiol estrogen cause? Aside from feminization of the body and personality, estradiol causes cancer, and most specifically, prostate cancer. So, just what are the odds of this happening to any given man? As we said in the introduction, in terms of prostate enlargement, by age 50, 75 percent of all men have an enlarged prostate, and by age 50, 33 percent have prostate cancer. Prostate cancer is the most common non-skin cancer in the United States, and the second leading cause of death from cancer among U.S. men, after lung cancer. As a man gets older, these numbers get much worse, and if a man lives long enough, prostate enlargement and cancer are virtually guaranteed. Medical treatments for an enlarged prostate and prostate cancer often leave men in diapers, unable ever to have sex again. So what do we as men need to do? We need to increase testosterone production, block the enzymes 5-alpha reductase and aromatase, and find some way of dealing with a prostate that has already become cancerous and enlarged. Alternative medicine has identified many natural ingredients that can help us do this, but the best of all of them are beta-cetosterol and ellagic acid. Beta-cetosterol suppresses both 5-alpha reductase and aromatase, so that takes care of DHT and estrogen. In terms of prostate cancer, animals treated with beta-cetosterol had 43 percent smaller tumors and had one-half the rate of metastases over untreated animals. Elagic acid works by causing cancer cells to actually self-destruct. The technical term for this is apoptosis. Whenever a cell becomes cancerous, our DNA instructs it to self-destruct. This is one of the most powerful safeguards we have in preventing cancer. Unfortunately, some cancer cells manage to block this signal. These are the cells that go on to grow and form tumors. What ellagic acid does is to reinstate the self-destruct signal in these cancer cells. Ellagic acid does this for all cancers, but studies show that it is particularly effective at this for prostate and breast cancers. So, what should we do? Go out and buy some beta-cetosterol and ellagic acid?